I'm Mikkel Abigail of Big Surgeon from Sydney, Australia. I am performing today an anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction using all inside technique and utilizing allograft. The patient is positioned supine on the table, tight support, and a bolster under the foot, and the knee is positioned 60 to 80 degrees of flexion. I don't inflate the tourniquet until I prepare the graft. For the graft preparation, I need two tight ropes, one on each end of the graft preparation station. This is an allograft, most likely to be alice posterior tendon. What I use is a straight needle fiber loop, but you can use any kind of suture. You also need three or monocle, marking pen, and few other instruments to hold the graft. After filling the graft, I trim it to the desirable size for the implantation. Ideally, the graft size should be 10 to 11 millimeters in diameter in a male. I remove one third of the proximal part of the graft and that should give us the desirable size. Positioning the graft in the tight rope is very important. The tight rope is prepared where I can lengthen the arms of the tight rope from each side. Each arm should be separated. It's very important not to make a mistake where we put the tight rope in this position as this will prevent the tension. You need to be careful when you apply it. This is the correct position. The allograft tendon is passed from top to bottom and on average I leave six and a half to seven centimeter of length and I clip it from the bottom upward and then from the top downward again. The two internal parts meet each other in the middle. I use an artery clamp to hold it together. I utilize a wet fiber suture to suture it together. I measure a distance of around two and a half centimeter from the tip where I insert my fiber loop suture. I do the internal two at the beginning, I pass the thread in the middle and I proceed from out in with one go. By doing this we secure the internal part of the suture together. This is the third go. I then tension the station to the desirable length. Now make sure that all the parts are tensioned to the desirable length equally. I then divide the fiber loop suture in half. This is the desirable tension that I wanted. I exit through the external part from one end in the middle and put tension on that place. And I exit from the other side with the other arm. I tie these two limbs together. And this forms the apex of the graph. I tie it to the station and then tension the overall station. You can see the graph is uniform. I then utilize the clear monocle to oversaw the outer to the inner part of the tendon. You can go to the proximal half and then you can return back from the other side. You don't need to go all the way down to the bottom. We finished the three or monocle at the same end that we started. You can see this graph preparation technique involves covering the tendon completely without any abrasive suture showing. Only the monocle is on view and it's very smooth. I mark the graph length and it's measuring 7.5, so I take into consideration the depth of my tunnel. I measure two and a half from one end and two and a half from the other end. Sizing the graph, this looks like around 10. This is very good size. We finished preparing the graph and we leave it with antibiotic impregnated saline gold. I elevate and inflate the tourniquet. We start by performing the arthroscopy. My landmarks are the inferior pole of the patella and the lateral border of the patella tendon. I use an 11 blade to enter the joint. Utilize a blunt choker to go into the joint. I first use suction to suck the joint, considering this is an acute injury. We enter the joint. I use standard arthroscopy technique, looking at the supra-patella pouch, the inferior surface of the patella. There is some humbral damage, the anterior surface of the femur, there is some damage, the lateral gutter, the medial gutter, then we move to the medial compartment. I then insert my anteromedial portal, that's performed in the region. I know the size of the graft is 10 millimeters, so we need to make size enough 
portal to fit that trust. I insert a probe, and you can see the pusher ligament is completely gone. This is an acute, and you can see there is still blood on the ACL stump. I position the patient in a figure of four. We get to the lateral meniscus. This is the lateral meniscus. The surface of the finger is intact, so we can do this. I then look at the medial meniscus. I put the leg in bow position in flight flexion and external rotation. The medial meniscus seems to be intact. We proceed to the ACL reconstruction, positioning the leg in the working position. I use the shaver to clear some of the stump. You see here that there is a beginning of a cycle cleaning, and we need to remove that to prevent anterior infusion. After clearing the anterior part of the tibial component of the stump, I move to the femoral component, and I clear the remnant of the ACL from the femur. Care must be taken not to perforate the posterior capsule as the neovascular structures lie behind the capsule. After finishing clearing the femoral side of the stump, I tear the femoral and the tibial socket. This is the PCL ligament. Beware of the intermeniscal ligament anteriorly, not to violate that ligament. Femoral G, I insert it through the lateral portal and it should sit exactly at the femoral stump of the ACL. I make a lateral cut at the femoral side. Let me cut it cut up. From out to I just exited the femur with the flip cutter. We remove the G. You can see the flip cutter coming out. I secure the trocar. I flip the drill part of the flip cutter. There is a black marker to identify the depth of my drilling. I drill backwards in the forward motion of the drill of the flip cutter to perform a socket. We measured on the graph two and a half centimeters, so I measure two and a half to three centimeters with my drilling. I remove the flip cutter after I unclip it, and then I insert a wire. This is a passing wire going from out to the inside. I remove the draw cutter. I change my portal again. To the lateral portal. I clean the debris from the joint so they don't form heterotropic ossification or loose bodies. I retrieve the wire through the medial portal. You can use rubber or an artery clip. The next step is to do the tibial tunnel. The tibial tunnel has to be anatomically positioned. I use the same size lip cutter. As you can see, the flip cutter is coming out exactly at the stump of the ACO. I secure the trocar, then we flip the flip cutter. I do full revolution of the flip cutter by hand to make sure that it's free. I use the same O-ring to identify the amount of pull. Go backwards again in forward revolution of the draw. I go the same distance. Of the tibia as I measure on the bar, or half a centimeter longer. I unclip the flip cutter and then use it to the tunnel. I use a passing suture. This is called father stick, but you can use any kind of suture material to retrieve the graft from the tibial tunnel. I then use another suture to retrieve the femoral side of the graft. Okay. We pull the wire through, we cut the loop. So you have one suture coming from the femur, one suture coming from the tibia, and this will retrieve the graft through the medial or the anterior medial portal. The final step before inserting the graft is to make sure that the anterior medial portal is large enough to take the graft. The markers show where it should sit in the femoral tunnel, tibial tunnel. For the sake of pulling the tunnel through the bra portals, I use the advantage of having this suture as accessory to the tight rope. This side will be the femoral side, so we pull all the sutures together. This is the core suture. 
of the inner part of the bra and that's what I tend to pull initially. The blue suture will take the button in and you can see the graft is coming through the joint. This process needs to be done gently and gradually. Now the graft is seated. I tension the position of the graft in the socket at the femur side. Then we move on to the tibial side. I pass the sutures through the loop and then I deliver sutures through the tibial tunnel. I pull on the blue suture first and you can see the button has come out and the graft is seated perfectly at the tibial tunnel. I tension the graft on the tibial side first, considering that I bottomed the femoral side already. I don't push the button down to the bone yet. I make sure that the graft is tensioned on the femur side and then I perform a cyclic flexion extension to make sure that the graft is not impinging on the knee. Ideally, you can tension the graft as much as you want in extension. I then tension the femoral side and make sure that the button is seated in the joint without impingement on the capsule or the synovial membrane. Finally, I see the button on the femur. That is tension on the femur now. So I can tell that the patient can achieve full extension. Now we flex the knee. The final step is checking the position of the bar and the tension. The position is very good and I check the tension which is very good and then I extend the knee and make the final tensioning of the bra in extension. So this is tensioning the bra in extension, making sure that the knee has full extension. Utilizing an image intensifier, we identify the position of the graft. You can see it's very horizontal, exactly where we want it to be. And on the tibia is central, on the AP view, and on the lateral, it's exactly where it should be. I'm very pleased with this position. Thank you very much.